Do you want to use multiple cameras in your live stream? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an ATEM switcher for a multi-camera production. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. Here on my YouTube channel, I'm getting inundated with more and more questions about how to set up different aspects of live streaming. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and configure what is probably the most popular line of video switchers for churches, the Blackmagic Designs ATEM. Here on my channel, I've shown several ways to stream live with a single camera, and if you already have a setup like that, adding a video switcher is actually pretty simple. The output from a single camera is just the video feed, and the output from the switcher is just the video feed. So all you need to do is swap out the camera in your live streaming setup with a switcher and then connect your cameras to the inputs of the switcher. Just be aware that on the newest version of the ATEM TVS HD, they've removed the HDMI output, which I really think is an unfortunate move. So just double check that the outputs of your switcher match the inputs of your video interface. When you first pull your ATEM switcher out of the box, there are gonna be two hurdles you face to getting it set up and running. The first is setting the IP address of the switcher. This enables the control software that you run on your computer to configure and control the switcher. To set the IP address, you connect your computer to the switcher with the USB connection and run the ATEM setup utility that was installed when you install the switcher software. As always, I recommend going to the Blackmagic Designs website and downloading the latest version rather than installing the software that came with your switcher since it may be an older version. In the setup utility, you'll need to set an IP address for your switcher that will work on your network and not conflict with any other devices. Alternatively, you can connect your computer's Ethernet cable directly to the ATEM and manually set your computer's IP address to one that is on the same subnet as the switcher. But in both situations, you'll need to remember the IP address you configure for the switcher so that you can connect to it in the control software because when you open the control software, the first thing it's gonna ask you is what is the IP address of the switcher. Once you have an IP address set and can connect the control software to the switcher, the second hurdle you will run into is that the ATEM switchers are very particular about the video standard or resolution and frame rate that you input into it. The inputs, your cameras or computers, have to match the video standard you set in the switcher. So either set the ATEM to a video standard and then configure all your cameras and other inputs to that same video standard, or you could come at it from the other way, find a common video standard that all your cameras can output, and set the ATEM to that. Either way, it's all got to match. To set the video standard, click the gear icon in the bottom left corner of the software, and on the general tab, select your video standard. If a camera or computer doesn't match the video standard of the ATEM, you won't get an image from it. I have another video you can find here that shows you how to use a format converter, which I think is the most reliable way to connect a computer to an ATEM. Another thing to be aware of when setting your video standard is what formats your video interface into your computer can handle. Again, if it's not a standard it supports, you won't get a signal. I'm finding more and more that Blackmagic Design interfaces are playing games with what formats are supported, in my opinion, in an effort to protect sales of their higher-end devices. That's one of the reasons why my new favorite interface for live streaming is the AJA UTAP. It just works on a PC or a Mac and supports any HD format. You can find a link to that below in the description of this video. Once you have those two things set, the IP address and the video standard, you're ready to hook up your cameras and start switching live video. One other thing you'll need to work out though is how to get audio into your switcher. The newer versions of the ATEMs have XLR inputs, so you can just connect a feed from a mixer there, and then in the control software, go to the audio panel and turn on the aux audio source. Most likely, you'll want to leave your camera audio sources turned off, since those are usually coming from the microphones on the camera. If you're just starting out with multiple cameras and wondering how to arrange them, I usually recommend camera one be a wide, static, unmanned shot. That way, if you don't have a shot on your other cameras, you can always know you can hit camera one and you'll be okay. Use this shot during transitions, as an establishing shot, and to give your viewers context. Camera two is usually a manned camera that's used for a close-up shot. And to start out with, that could be all you need, depending on how many people you have to run things. Camera three could be another manned camera in the center with a full body shot, or some sort of a side angle that's either manned or static. After that, it's up to you. Most productions would go to a manned camera on the floor in front of the stage, and then someone on stage. But you can also set up multiple static cameras on stage and accomplish a similar effect 
which is the approach we take since having a cameraman on stage just doesn't work with our culture here. Finally, you can add in any kind of specialty shots, like close-ups on the drums or keyboards, or even a wide shot of the audience. So that should get you up and live streaming with multiple cameras. My next video is going to be about video distribution. How do you get your video not only to your live stream, but also send it to other things like a record deck, maybe to some TVs in your lobby or around your building, or even send a camera up to your projectors. All that's gonna be covered in my next video, so be sure and subscribe to my channel so you'll see all my upcoming videos. Until next time, bye.